Hey guys, so some really fantastic news has just come up and especially for you if you are in the market for a new Tesla Model 3 performance. Throughout all our videos, we have been diving into whether the Model 3 performance lives up to all its hype and once it was revealed, did it actually come through? Coming from the original prototypes where engineers went through great lengths to keep it hidden from the public to the point where it had its own media event and the media groups got to test drive it and eventually brought it home. And then even up till right now, when the car has officially been announced, we still feel as though we're left in the dark with everything that is happening with this model. Now, I would say that this has a lot to do with Tesla's previous approach to marketing. They kept a lot of internal components hidden. Things like the power figures of the motors, the type of batteries going into your car, as well as the range you can expect when you take delivery of it. All of this has made it quite difficult for the average buyer to adjust to, keeping them from making the final decision decision and hitting that order button. In the past couple of months, Tesla has been making various changes to how everything is communicated to the customers. They are going for the more transparent approach after the EPA regulators have stepped in. So because of this change, you'll now see things on the design studio that are much more transparent such as toggles for federal incentive, gas savings, as well as clear indicators to what you will be getting when you place the order. But the most important thing coming out of this transition is the recent push for a more stricter guideline and requirement for the range estimates. This gives the average buyer a sense of security knowing that what they are being advertised is what they're going to be getting in real life. So now what this all means is there is a great shift happening and things will take time so you will have to pay additional attention to the design studio and on specific trims what you will be getting and what is being displayed. Now as you are ordering and picking between the different options it is very important to look up at the range estimates. This is where you're going to be seeing two different types. One is going to be an estimated range coming directly from Tesla and the other is going to be one that is thoroughly tested and confirmed by EPA. So the one that you obviously want to go to is the one that is coming from the government. This is going to give you the most accurate range of it all. So definitely something you need to consider once you jump through the different types of trims. This has not been completely updated yet so it's good to know where you're at in terms of when you order. So because of this drastic change that happened in the past couple of months, Tesla now has to adjust how they approach this method of displaying the range estimates. There are going to be a few implications to the average buyers like you and I, but the majority of it is going to fall on the shoulders of Tesla and how they are going to approach the marketing aspect of it to ensure that the range is going to be correct. The first thing they'll have to do is allow third party EPA regulators to come in and test the range of each of their models. This is going to be the fact that before the vehicles can be sold. The second implication here is that it's going to be adding to the already overly complicated variations of vehicles, some being LFPs, some being NMCs, and some qualifying for the tax credits. And finally, due to the stricter guidelines set out by the government, they are now forced to reduce the range estimates substantially, making it much less than what they had previously. Now, to be quite fair, what Tesla had done originally to get their estimated range is not exactly how most of us would drive. They probably go on the stretch of hypermiling and this is how they get to the final number. So this means that only in very ideal conditions with perfect weather, perfect climate, and without the climate control on, you will be able to achieve exactly what they stated on their website. I would say that this is not how the majority of us drive. Most of us will have the air conditioner on with our music blasting, driving at a much faster pace, as well as temperature not being always perfect. This is how EPA is rating it with the stricter guidelines and this is why there is going to be a very large delta between the two types of estimates. Now, like I said, this is where it makes it extremely difficult and very hard to adjust for the average buyer. If a person had gone onto the website a few months back and they went onto it again now, they would notice that all the cars are going to be having a decrease in range and they may think that Tesla is just removing or making it worse for all of their products. Well, obviously, this isn't the case but the fact that it has seen a decrease in range estimates this is where a lot of buyers are extremely confused so yeah all in all this is just quite a mess but moving forward we are going to be seeing a lot more transparency from Tesla and this is going to be starting out with the model 3 performance
Now, this is sort of a mixed bag because with transparency, it can realistically go in any direction. Tesla has decided with the new Model 3 performance, this time around, they will be providing all the power figures rather than keep it hidden. This is very different than what they had done with the previous Model 3 performance, where the only thing you got to see was the range and the 0 to 60s. First off, being that the range was not tested by EPA yet, they've set it out to be a very conservative number at 296 miles on a full charge. This number here is the exact reason why a lot of people are holding off buying the car. I know this is not as important to everybody, but to me, psychologically hitting the perfect round 300 number is where we want to be and I feel a lot of people out there are experiencing the same thing. Now I would say that this practically applies to every other car out there, be it EV or internal combustion. Just having that satisfaction of feeling a round number, that means that even hypothetically if we had an EV that had a range of 990 miles on a full charge, I would still not be as satisfied rather than seeing it hit 1,000 miles on the display. So yeah, whatever that means, I hope you guys understand. But on a really great note here, it's really good to see that Tesla has taken a very conservative approach on this because now EPA has given us an official number and the car is going to be coming in at above 300 miles. So pinning it at 303 miles, this makes us feel a lot better that it's much closer to the long range trim rather than the base model. This just gives a satisfactory feeling that nobody can really describe. I know that the car is not any better, it's not going to have any additional range, but the fact that Tesla is going to now be able to update the UI to show the number 303 right up top there is just going to be another great feeling. Alright, so enough of the random stuff that I'm just spewing out, let's talk about the real power numbers. These power numbers here provided by Tesla is going to be the bulk of where all the confusion comes from. By now, you probably already know that there are two different versions of the Model 3 performance, the US and the global variant. One is going to be having the Panasonic batteries, one is going to be having LG, one is going to be having 510 horsepower, and the other is going to be having 460. Now, because of how Tesla had originally advertised the old Model 3 performance or their lack of, we don't know exactly what the power figure are and we don't have a clear comparison to the newest Model 3. So now what that means is all we can rely on is third party accessories, tools, and a tested and tried dyno machine. Then given the fact that we also have the official numbers for the Tesla Model 3 performance, we can compare what we actually see in real life and what has been posted. Alright, so although there hasn't been any official dyno numbers yet, early owners that have taken delivery have started posting 0 to 60s online, tons of launches happening and now we get some very good indications of where we're at. First off, from what it looks like, Tesla has started deliveries in all different countries all at the exact same time. So if you are waiting out for your Model 3 right now, it looks like it won't be any longer and your estimated delivery date could be pushed up just earlier than what it says. Just in the last 48 hours alone, we have seen deliveries in Europe, in China, in Australia, the US, and the United Emirates. These are all places that are just getting tons of deliveries right now of the Model 3 performance and probably you will be hearing about yours extremely soon. Now what's even more crazy about this is that if you're willing to put aside configuration, there are actual inventory vehicle Model 3 performances available for pickup today. That means that if you live in places like California or in Las Vegas, you can walk into a service center and take your car right now if you really wanted to. Alright, so from what we've gotten so far from these early deliveries and the inputs that we have gotten from these owners is the fact that the general consensus is the Model 3 performance upgraded or the Highland version is extremely insane. We have been seeing 0 to 60 runs all across the world right now and it seems like all of them are getting sub 3 seconds and that means that the Model 3 is much more powerful than what it states. Now there has been a lot of debate between the two variants which car is faster, quicker, with better build quality. That is for you to decide when you take your car but from what we've seen after converting from kilometers to miles, the car is not far off from each other. Thanks to all these early delivery owners for posting up these videos, but as you can see here, the comparison between the US side versus the global variant, the US version has been seen doing 0 to 62 miles per hour in approximately 3 seconds, whereas the global version has been seen doing 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in about 2.9. That means that after doing the conversion, both of them 
them are pretty much neck and neck. The only real difference here you may see is going to be when somebody tests out the quarter mile and anything above that, that is where maybe the US variant is quicker. Now I really want to break down all these numbers and I want to find really interesting about all this after doing so is the fact that Tesla may be really underballing all of these specs. From what we have seen so far and the comparison right here shows that the torque curve of the new Model 3 performance is so much more than the previous. With this updated version you'll notice a constant push even at much higher speeds all the way up to the max limiter. You can also see here the potential of this new Model 3 performance with the recent draggy time in Las Vegas a new owner has done it and it seems like it even does it in under 2.9 seconds. Now what's even more crazy about this is it's going at a slight incline and it's doing it at 2.86 seconds. That means that we could possibly see much more potential coming out of these motors once the full unlock is available. Now for what we have right now at 2.8 seconds on public road and doing a standstill up to top speed, if you can see it doing in 2.86 seconds, imagine what it's able to do on a prep drag strip. Another part to break down here is the number 2.9 seconds as Tesla had advertised. This includes the one feet rollout that they are very famous for. So what this means is with the metric of measurement of 2.9 seconds with a one feet rollout, that means that we are realistically going to be at three seconds with zero rollouts at all. But the fact that Tesla is able to achieve this on the actual delivery cars at 2.86 seconds with zero rollout, it means that if we go back and use Tesla's method of calculation, realistically, they could advertise the car as coming in at 2.7 seconds. Now, all of this may just be too much. All of it just sounds too insane. But what we can summarize it as is that this car has so much more potential, but very similar to the Model S Plaid where it had a limited 160 two miles this felt like there was so much more potential to those motors and Tesla eventually released the full unlock and you can get all the way up to 200 miles per hour and so much more acceleration so obviously what this leads us to believe is the fact that Tesla is going to be providing an uncorked experience pretty much a software unlock for a certain amount of fee when the time comes and once everything has been tested. So if this is really the case, Tesla has really outdone themselves this time around. They kept things very conservative and once we got our hands on the car, it shows us that they have over delivered in so many areas. So yeah, there are a ton of stuff happening with the Model 3 performance and the latest one being the track package that they are testing right now with a different set of wheels and with some very hidden stuff on the inside. If you do want to check that out or you have missed it, definitely go check out the video. I will drop it in the comments pin tab below as well as the description and right up top there. Definitely check that out because there is something coming up very, very soon. But of course, I will be following up with everything that comes out regarding the Model 3 performance, its updates, its features, and upgrades. If there is anything else, you will find it on this channel. Anyways, this should wrap it up for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and follow me on Twitter or X if you haven't already done so. This should be it. This is John once again. Peace out.